I had a great story for you. I, I really love to tell stories. It keeps me awake. Several years ago, and almost everything I say now starts with several years ago. I you know, but does this several years ago we're running a a wing tee with the basic principles, not the plays, but you know, basic principles certainly there. And we go to play a particular team, and I won't tell you the name of it. But the, the night before the ball game, we pra we worked out. Friday afternoon, worked out the field, and came in, and their stadium was set up. At the, so they had our locker room was at the end, and I walked in their locker room by mistake. So you know, there two the visitors were over here, and I and, and in their locker room they had a hall going down that led from the doctor's office and training facilities into the locker itself. And on the walls they had these two by three posters, beautifully done about like that and like that, artistically put together all of our offense. I can see it immediately. There's about nine and ten of the things that we really like to run is on there. And I stepped up there to read them and it says, seal the shoulder, check the waggle, take the guard on with your, you know, this one. Don't chase the fullback until you see blah 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 blah, blah. or don't, don't chase don't chase the guards until you've checked off the fullback that kind of thing. So I went in there and we had dinner and everybody else ate but me and I sat there and I had a staff meeting. I said, gentlemen, as soon as we if we get out of this weekend alive, we will never run this garbage again because we've been going to clinics and mouthing off about it and just, you know. Gone, and we've got a clinic of our own at school every year, and about 500 people come in there, and there's a lot of people running the stuff in high school. And uh, you know, the word gets out, so that that's it. It's 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 it died its natural death today. And then on top of that, getting back to my defensive prowess, I put a defense together that was absolutely infallible. There's no way you could they could make an inch off this defense. We kicked the ball off to them. They got the ball on the 30, their own 30-yard line. We employ this magic defense of mine that's infallible. And the opening play goes 70 yards for a touchdown. They kicked the point, 7 nothing. I turned to look at Kemsky, who's our offensive coordinator. I said, this thing is going to be 150 to nothing. I just can't wait for this day to get over with. Well, with the ball, when the, when, when, the, when the day ended, we had beaten them 62 to 7. They couldn't stop anything. And I've never seen an example of people being overcoached. I mean, they were giving it this and this, and, and things were going right on by them. And I think that in some ways, uh, people who go to play us and feel that they, and they can easily overcoach us, I mean, overcoach their people, They're chasing different things. And uh, in that, that last ball game in, uh, it wasn't the last one, but we, when we played Montana in the playoffs and won 49 to nothing, they made the fatal mistake of on their last touchdown running a kickoff back all the way for a touchdown. and Because that, that left us a, a minute and 50 some seconds left, which was enough for us to score again. Because we just played like volley, it was just like volleyball, boom. It's like that looked like tackling had been declared illegal and we're just moving the ball. And I think that in that case, uh, when somebody has only a couple days to get to, to get ready for you, um, we well we we, we make the smile. Of who's the last team to beat Terry Bowden? Well, we were. <laughs> we, well, the year before he coached at Sanford, and he came up to our place and play, we played him in the tournament a year ago, and he made the comment, "It was awful when we found out we we're going to play you because." Our, our demonstration team is primarily made up of five kickers that can't kick. And he said it took us till Wednesday to get that motion down. I mean, we, it was too late, you know. But, uh, but I, anyway, I think that those are cute stories. It wastes a little bit of time, got me, got me uh, wide awake again now. Um, I want to... I want to give you the basic waggle because it so much runs off of it, comes off of it, and uh, two very famous guys used our used our offense. Uh, one was Marv Levy, 
when he first went to uh, Kansas City, he ran it. He ran it for uh, really a year and a half there, and he moved the ball very well. Uh, those uh, that wingback blocking on that linebacker was kind of an anomaly in the NFL. It's that that bothered him. So um, he thought that, that the waggle was maybe one of the best football plays in in in, in, in football and. Uh, and uh, Eric Parsegan ran it the last few years he was at Notre Dame, and it's pretty good. It, it, it's, it's been very good for us. Waggle implies that we're going to go away from the, from the action, and the quarterback's going to keep the ball now. And we've been, we do some bootlegs, run him out there all by himself, and hit some wideout stuff, but the basic waggle looks like this. The end releases inside, and we often get have the comment by the tight end, but coach, if I go inside, I can't get out there. He says, what do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? He said, he said well, if I go down, that, that linebacker goes right down there with me and sits on me. I, I mean, so I said, well, wait a minute, you mean to tell me that you st all you have to do to block the guy is to step inside and he's completely out of play. That's right, coach. Of course, the kid's worried about his mother's in the stands, not going to see him in the pass pattern. He wants to get out there and catch the ball. So if that's true, you just stay there because you haven't blocked him all night anyway. This is one way we got him now. And the front side guard pulls out, gets a little bit of depth, and turns in and blocks him. So that if that backer... If that backer goes down with a tight end, oh, you've seen him go down all night. I, I mean, I've been talking about him blocking down all night, and we're kicking him out, and we're hooking him, and you know we've been working on him. And so he, you know, he doesn't know what, what that's going to be the down, the down, the fullback down play, or whatever it is in there. And uh, the tackle block, blocks gap on him before he blocks down and puts his head on that side. Fullback goes through the hole and and blocks that backer if he's in the way. And then skids out in the flat or hooks up when he, when, where he's in the open. And the backside guard pulls, and he reads the front side guard. He's ready to kick out if something comes off the corner. Otherwise, he's just going to make sure that no, nothing sneaks through there. And this is step and cup, and that's step and cup. Wing back blocks down, spread in fakes blocking down. Looks like we're going to run the sweep to this thing. And they both read the free safety. If the free safety flows over there with the tight end, then that wing back goes right up the chute, and the end goes up the chute. As a matter of fact, they, he, he'll run. Um, he'll run up it up the middle and find an open spot, and this man will run and not any farther than the hash, just stay out of there. But if this free safety is well disciplined and hangs in the middle, then our wingback will run across and the wideout will run behind him. The quarterback comes out, he does not fake, he does not hand fake to the fullback. I, we could talk all night, we could have a whole a whole evening on the quarterback technique, but the quarterback keeps his keeps his hands in. So he takes the ball, he brings it, he, he takes the ball from the center, he brings it to his belly, gets in the fat part with both hands, brings it in the natural faking pocket, keeps his elbows in, the ball is tight. So when he when he reverse pivots like this, the ball is tight, it's it, it's very difficult to see. And he never extends the ball until he either goes to hand it off or, and most of our handoffs are forearm length handoff, so he comes out of there like that. And, and uh, now he makes the fake and puts the ball, jabs the ball and brings it back on his hip and lets it hang there and lets the other hand flop like this. And he looks up and re reads the free safety. If the free safety stays in the middle, and or he can see that by continuing this assault on the flank, he can get out there and either throw a touchdown pass, keep the ball, or drop it to the fullback. 
if he sees the free safety go this way, he knows that that touchdown shot is open there. This last year, for every five completions we had, we had one touchdown pass. Okay? A lot of action stuff. And, um, and I'll show you some more. But that's... Uh, now, this, of course, this, this type of play is very similar to the buck sweep in terms of the linebackers. This sets up the gut play, the fullback up the middle again. So, once again, if those, if those linebackers are just, are just chasing the, chasing the uh, um, just chasing the, the, uh, the guards, then, you know, we, we, we've got something going there. Now, I don't want to give you a bunch of specials. I really am not... As a matter of fact, we're, we're not a very, we're not a very special oriented team. I don't like, uh, I'm not, as a matter of fact, it probably, if, if I were to criticize myself, it would be we don't, we don't use enough specials. We just sit in there and make these things go. And, but uh, here's one that we've had a great deal of success with. It's called the waggle screen. I think this is a good time to show it to you. Everybody runs the waggle. Like that. And the quarterback comes out here, fakes the ball and comes out, he gets a little bit of depth. Three man releases and blocks out. Five man releases, so get all the big men going. And he just turns and drops the ball back here, here. And we've had people who will say, oh, there's that waggle. He runs out to cover the guy in the middle. He runs out and covers the guy in here. And we got somebody chasing off the backside. There's nobody out here at all. And um, we, we've had a lot of luck with that. And that's, that's the waggle screen. Now, before I leave that, I want to show you I, I diagram the um, the waggle runs. you got a feel, a feel for that. And I'd like to show you the the rest of this the rest of the possibilities with this. If I moved him up on the line of scrimmage and him back at the last second, and then I were to bring him around like this, then I'm running waggle into two receivers. I mean, I could run waggle. Here's an example of that. If everybody blocked, now we've got three men in the pattern right away. quarterback reverse pivot, spakes the ball, and it comes out here. Our favorite pass from this has been, now, this is right 29, excuse me, this is right trips. Right trips. That puts the left half back up and the outside man off. 29 waggle. And our favorite pattern has been switch, which is this. On the switch pattern, the fullback runs right up the chute. The tight end is in the flat. In other words, so the, the fullback and the tight end have exchange assignments, threats. The fullback now is going up the chute. The guard is, and, the, and the tight end is going out. 
we get an automatic we get an automatic curl by the wide out this would be this would be right trips 29 waggle switch and, it, and that has that has uh, been a good adjustment uh, off the waggle which is a little bit different I think than what you've seen from us now going on with uh, I want to show you one more one more pattern off of this so that you you get the idea that we're running we're running a, a pass off everything we've got some kind of pass off everything and they're not they're not really driving these things are not really driving patterns I'll, you know a lot of them have uh, a great have are, are very prolific action passes for, for scores and the um, that that waggle switch is exceptional down inside the 20 yard line you know and everybody's covering man and it's everybody's starting to pick up people they see that in go down and out he runs up the actions the other way that free safety runs up there to, tends to do that to the secondary and then there goes the fullback is in the open well if you'll go back to our the second uh, play that we talked about we've got the down option going one way and the option load going the other way uh, and a lot of people are I said one way one way of killing us is with the is with the free safety uh, we call it pointing I don't know what you call it but I you know, already gave indication of a point running up in there with action this way and they do the same thing going back to the weak side and they see what they see what we're doing and uh, and you know they see the option coming back this way and they got a lot of folks over here to stop the stop this play and if they don't bring the safety up in there to to get involved with the with that weak side option they've got some real problems and the play that we've come up with off that is right trips 89 keep pass throwback there's the trips now suddenly this guy is eligible the free safety's not much worried about him he's not thinking about him he's he's going to come back up and He's going to come back up and in, in the and support this this um, option play off the weak side. And now the, the 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 technique here for protection is if the left halfback sees anybody up on the line of scrimmage, a linebacker or anything that looks like it might drive off that side, he blocks them right now. So he's going to keep this safe here. And when they come out of there and make it look like it's going to be the, the option, he just steps in and runs right up there where the guy was, where the guy ain't. Free safety, where the free safety isn't. And the first day we used this, we threw three touchdown passes in one ball game, hitting that same guy. We're running, 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 and then boom pop it in there and that uh, that's the throwback pass off the uh, now let's um, let's move on and I'll I will uh, completely baffle you now you're not going to believe me We have run the triple option primarily to a, a spread receiver for the last two years. Actually, we've run it three years, but we, the, the three years prior, 
We didn't read it. We simply called it. And the reason that we want to do it is that you've seen our blocking here where we're all blocking down, and that's pretty good when you got the tight end. And of course, we do some of it over here to, to the spread end side, but only when you get a specific flank for it to run the sweep over here with the block down. And um, we just needed a very good option play to the spread end. We have run the we have run the trap option with a fullback up the middle, reverse pivot, and gone down the line. But the trap option pass is better than the trap option itself. We can talk about that later. But uh, the, the 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 technique or the movement, the evolution of this thing for us has been this. We ran we ran the 40s, which is the fullback up the you know, up, just to open up and ride to him, and we simply called it. Now we've got a lot of offense, but when you when you get right down to it, the techniques that we're running are very few. <coughs> are very few. It's the formations that that change things around from from the defensive standpoint. But we don't have that much. We're not asking our people to do that much offensively because because they're, they're all related in, in such a way. So when we went to this, the first year we ran it, we had a very good quarterback. And we told him just the opposite of the wishbone teams. We said, ride the ball and keep it if you can. If there's any chance, you keep it if you can. So our technique is, I'm not going to stand up here and tell you that I started the wishbone. I mean, I, uh, so I just talked to Fisher to Barry this last week about about putting some of the things we have together. He wants to do some of our things, and we sure could get better at what he's doing. We take the ball, just like we always did, pull it to the belly, and step back as far as we can and jab the ball while reading. And the read itself is done way back in here somewhere, not way up in here. I mean, that's where those folks that do it all every day, they got it, that's where they do it. But, but when we're just, we just, we stole the play, we're using their play, and that's the way we did it two years ago. This last year, we have a fullback who's making a coach out of me. He's 240 pounds. I told you he, he, he ran for 1,300 yards. He ran that gut like a runaway night train. He's going up there, and um, so this last year we said, give the ball to Daryl, unless it's really shut off. It's fine. He steps back in there. If there's any kind of hole in there, give the ball to Daryl. He just rattle up in there. And um, <coughs> one of our philosophies, I, and I, 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 I usually wait about this time to tell anybody this because I'm afraid everybody get up and walk out. Almost everybody's walked out anyway, but um, the four-yard football play is the killer in football. Now, the minute you say that, you say, oh, my golly, here we go back to Woody Hayes. And, I, and with all respect to Woody Hayes, he's a great coach. But I, the point I'm making is this, that the four-yard football play changes everything. If I can run a football play against your defense and demonstrate to you that I have a reasonable chance of making four yards with this football play un until you do something about it. That's what changes things. So that if I throw a pass, say I throw a post pattern, and a kid jumps up and makes a nice catch, makes 25, 30 yards. On the sideline in the next series, what happens? Their backfield coach gets on the cornerback, take it down a little bit, Make sure the free safety gets over there so that thing doesn't, you know, we don't want another, we don't want a touchdown pass out of that, that 30, and that's it. The real changes take place when a kid comes off the sideline and he says to the coach, you tell me now what to do. I, we, the way we're sitting in there now, I, we can't stop that play, any play. You know, we refer to that as the four yard football play. All of our, all of our stats, we're making our cutups now and all of our stats, we're all, all of our stats together and we're looking for the, the percentage of efficiency. How often does this play make 
four yards or picks up the first down or does what it's supposed to do. And those are the ones that we really get excited about. Well, this, adding this to our offense helped us with this. And here's the way we blocked it. He blocked gap lead, gap on lead. This one blocked gap bump lead backer. So it looks like this. I'll show you what I mean by even spacing, like that. The fullback clears the outside leg of the guard. Now, and you, when we started to think about this, we said, well, we can't run this. We, th those, those wishbone teams have got the guy down to four points, and he's, he's way up in there close to the line of scrimmage. No, no. You look at him, his hands are at four yards. They're down there like that, and he's back there at four yards. And our guy is just like this at four yards. They're just as close. And uh, we've already set up the motion. We've already practiced the motion. And uh, we got that set up going. And these people are going to reach like this and go on up. Steps back, rides the ball, and and the decision is made back in there somewhere. Now, at the risk of, of, of confusing you, I will move this on up just a little bit and say, as that man gets more and more in the gap and on that shoulder, then our three man will go around to block the backer and we'll still do that. Okay? And if we get even spacing, then we would get bump lead backer and then he'd go up to the backer and we're going to read the first thing outside of that gap. If we get this repeatedly, then we will be ready to go with gut, which is this. Gut simply means that the five man, the center, is going to be responsible for the nose man by himself. And he steps around to do that, and we read the next man outside. Okay? Now let's take a look at the uh, let's take a look at the release. Extremely important uh, to the football play. There's four there. There's five. There's six. One, two, three. If we get a normal situation. Where four is crackable, there he is right there, then it's blocked like this. This man drives off right at him, and he doesn't recognize him as not being eligible right now. He drops off, he comes in and cracks him, and he moves right on up to block six. The wingback flares, checks four, stalks five. Okay, now every option that I've drawn for you tonight has been a loaded option. And the guard or somebody was blocking three. When you run a loaded option, you enhance the quarterback's opportunity to run. You're creating an opportunity for your quarterback to run. When you release in the secondary like this, you are creating an opportunity to pitch the ball. And the quarterback's running opportunities are not going to be nearly as good. Now, if this, this, all of this can change, if this man comes up here so that you can't block him, we have a call for that. Call is four. It means now that he will block four, 
he will block five, and the wingback will run up and block six. Now, we're really in shape now. If they move over like this, where there's only one man out there, we want to come back to the weak side, and we're going to do the same thing with this formation. Loose right, 41 option or 49 option on the ball. Check cadence. Coming back this way, Oh, baby, he's got a shot at him. He does that, bump lead, ride that fullback up in there. And you have him isolated. Now, You think we're not setting up some good passes off this? The first one would be the look in. If we bring this man up on the line of scrimmage and him back, then both of the ends are, are, are eligible, but the wing back isn't now. He's covered by that guy. And this man suddenly becomes eligible when perhaps they didn't see it. And now we run, a, we'll have him block, run the, run the op option action and turn him inside like that and turn him in. And the quarterback comes down the line and this guy's getting, that strong safety is getting tired of all this foolishness. The guy, you know, they're driving him off and then knocking him down and, and uh, so he, and he just, he sees that action, he starts to come up, step back and Pop the ball, there or there. Now, we also have this, this going for us. If we go to trips, then all three of these people are eligible. And you run the uh, run the triple option back here. And we get him filling, and that guy runs the same pattern as the tight end did, and throw back to him. Those are throwback option throwback passes. So that by creating eligibility and taking it away, now you can create uh, an opportunity to go back up there. Now I want to tell you some. I want to talk to you a little bit about passing, and and once again, if you got it, if, if you have any, if you have any um, questions, be sure to stop me. Is it ten minutes after nine? Your time. Tennis after 10, mine. I thought you'd be interested in knowing about that. That's, that's why if I start to give it this, you'll know. It. I'm talking about throwing, just a little bit. If I had a dime for every baseball I threw, I'd take you all down to the bar and buy you drinks all night long. I'd have so much money when I threw so many baseballs. And, uh, and there's a lot of baseball carryover here for the passer. The first one is this. When our quarterbacks practice on the sideline, I mean, 
where they, they start to throw on the side on the side before practice, before a ball game. There's I got a handful checkoffs. The first thing is I want that passing grip the same every time. If you don't have if he doesn't have that ball in that same grip every time, he does he's a scatter arm. He doesn't have a chance of learning how to throw the ball where he wants it. The next thing is that I'd like to have him stride when he starts to throw. I'd like to have him stride, and I, I really get up. These kids come, to, then they got, they've been to some camp, some important. They got, they got one like this, like that. All of which is, is okay, I guess, but they got to learn how to throw like this first. If they take a step like this to throw, and they'll pigeon that foot, I got to turn it in a little bit. Then I got the shoulder back here. I got the shoulder back. I can do something with that shoulder. Boom. But if I open up like this, see what that does to my hand, my body, then all I got is that. Now, there are going to be times you're going to have to throw the ball like that. I'm not going to argue about that. But there's a lot of kids that don't get that feeling of standing, of striding like that with the toe pigeon, and then the side coming through. The next thing is you never, ever just throw the ball. You got to have a place. You 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 have to know exactly where I'm going to throw the ball. I'm throwing the ball at his face, right there, bang. So I I work on that, and then I throw to his right ear, to his left ear, over his head, in his belly, and it's only through doing that that the quarterback will ever get a feeling of control. Otherwise, he just takes and just throws it up there. Well, you don't want that in your passing game. The, the, the passer is just like a pitcher. He's got to throw some low and away. He's got to drill some balls to get it there. He's got to touch the ball some places to get it where he wants it. And he can get a lot of this in the um, in this warm up, just get it, getting it underway. And then if he doesn't throw the ball where he's supposed to, I tell him about it. Throw an out cut down here where it can't be covered. You got a, a tight end running in the seam. The defender is there. The ball is thrown here. Tight end in the seam. Defender is there. The ball is thrown there. He's got to do that with a ball. So um, I spent a lot of time worrying about that and getting on him and so forth and uh, try to get him to throw the ball, throw the ball right. And now the next thing with, with our, with an offense like ours that is has so much, you know, here we, I just ran from the buck sweep to the, to the wishbone. Um, you, you have to, I, we're extremely careful about how much material we teach, how much techniques we teach. So our basic passing, our basic pass protection essentially stays the same. Here it is. Disregard now, and I've, I've already given, I've already given you some of the step and cup with the, and the waggle with the tight end, the backside tackle. But if we're going to throw the ball, when you design pass protection, there's only two things you can do. One is to turn out on both sides. And the other is to go, go one way or the other. And we go, we, we announce a side and then they go away from that. So if we said that we're going to throw, that our, our basic pass is going to go to this side, this call, then this man blocks gap on outside. And his buddy blocks gap on inside. And the fullback, whatever his technique is, is going to block this seam or this seam, that backer. The back three men step and cup. Now I've got three guys protecting on the front side and three people protecting on the back side. And if this backer were to fire, center blocks the guy on him, but his head is on that side. If that backer fires, the center will leave him, four will block him, 
The center blocks the firing backer. The tackle blocks the man on the outside. The guard blocks him. This changes a little, or could change. Up front with the eagle. If we get people like this, and the four man can no longer help the five man, he says, Eagle, you got him, baby, you're on your own. The five man in turn says, Eagle, so that if that back were to fire now, he's got to block him. Okay, they can't go back now, they got to block on. The fullback would block the first thing off there or coming back inside. Now, this is used, th these assignments then are used with the belly keep pass. All right, I, I, I showed you the, the keep pass throwback and I showed you the, 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 the keep pass jet. Um, th that principle took, took a place in there. And We have two, in, in, in addition to the waggle, a 20 waggle, and the 80 keep pass, and the 40 option pass look in those things, we have two types of, 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 of drop back. One is the 50s, where these people are all gonna be blocking that protection, but when I say 50, they're gonna make it aggressive especially in here. If I stepped him up and step him back so I got I've got uh, loose right trips and then the basic pattern is 51 which is an eight yard out, a look in and a look in. The fullback hurries across there and blocks either of those. And if he finds that they're coming like that and the backer's dropping, then he'll turn right in there. And then that guy will drag after he's made sure that there's nobody coming off that backside. And the quarterback then throws three steps. He takes the ball, one, two, three, and he throws right off that foot, just like a shortstop going into the hole. Boom, just like that. And he wants to plant that foot on the third step and drill the ball. If he, he comes out and takes a look at this, and he finds that there's, that's gonna be covered with a 100 secondary or by a quarterback who's dropped off, and he's just gonna drill the ball to him. If he finds any kind of roll up out there, where they start, they're starting to roll up like 200, or a linebacker's gone out underneath them, he looks at that, he looks at that, but then he's immediately looking for one of these two people. And that would be his first look. That's one, I've forgotten about that because he's it's, it's rolled up or double covered in some way. Then he looks at him, then he looks at him. And if that doesn't look good, then he, he converts the three-step to five-step and gets ready to dump the ball to the fullback. That's the 50s. If we want to call patterns, then this man's, number, this man's assignment is, is, is announced first, then this one, and then this one. Loose right trips, 51. Post flying flat. That would mean he would post, he would fly, and he would run in the flat. And when you ask for patterns like that, then now the line knows, hey, he's going back there to seven yards, and I'm going to give ground and let it go. I'm going to give ground, and it's going to take a lot longer to, to get rid of it. This introduces then. 
one more pattern and then I'm going to just flatten out right here. I, I, I wish I'd have brought our cut ups because I, and then you could see this thing. You, and you'd believe me then. <laughs> um, but we needed something. We need so we get the third and ten, third and twelve, third and fifteen, like everybody else. You know, I, I, I hate to say that to you, but I mean, I couldn't be honest about it. Uh, and we needed some, we needed something else. So we put in. We, we added another another uh, drop back uh, passing series, and and here it is. <clears throat> From loose right, we'll always go trips when we do it. So we've got the three people out there. They're all released like they're going downtown. Just take off. And um, if we get, uh, th if this ball's on the left hash, and this is fine. If it's in the middle of the field, then we should go just loose with two wide outs on either side and the two wing backs because you need, you need the room. And after eight yards or between eight and ten yards, the outside guy is reading his coverage. If he finds that the cornerback is just squatting out there, then he'll just take off. If he finds that he is He's, he's going to cover them deep like that, and then he works his way to the outside. These two men do the same thing and work their way to the inside. The pass protection is the same on the 50s. Same as the 50s. It's really the same as on the belly keep pass. In some ways, it's the same as the waggle. They just, the, the guards have trade assignments. The backside guy softens up in there. Now here's what happens. If somebody is playing us, and they're all jacked up about our running game, which I hope we can get them to do, very often they'll end up with only two people deep. And we, end, we find out that he runs there and he picks him up, he runs there and he picks him up, and there's nobody there. And we kind of got to anticipate that a little bit. Now, and you pop that in on first down occasionally, and, and that's, it's, it's worth uh, throwing the ball away to, uh, um, to make them jumpy. So they just don't jump up all over your, you just don't jump up all over your, uh, the rest of your stuff. Now, we are going to, I know we're a long ways from home, I'll just, t I'll tell you anyway. If you're interested in any of this information, and, I, and I, I'll be extremely honest about this, we used to make our playbook available and we'd give it away. But, or, or I guess they paid $10 or something like that to, for the printing of it. We, we actually gave away our playbook. Our playbook is a, um, is, is a play manual. And in the offensive section, it has the uh, six basic defenses that we see, and then it has the, the, the assignments below it in a staccato form like gap on backer. And then if there's any technique involved, then that's written on the other page. So the kid memorizes this little gap on backer, gap on lead, pull, hook, kick out, whatever. And then the, the technique is on in another place. And then the kid has to draw the pictures of the plays. We don't draw it for him. He has to draw it during the meetings. And then I put it in, I put it in against one spacing, and then that afternoon the, 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 uh, the group coaches have it drawn in for other spacings in, in their meetings. And so we used to let that go, and that was such a pain in the tail that you know, we were, were in the book business, and I didn't want to be in a book business, so we wrote a book. 
And the guy was kind enough to show me the book. Where's that book? I signed it tonight. Anyway, it was in. It's called, yeah, that's it right there. It's a wing tee, an order of football. And that's the way I feel about our offense. It's an order of football. It's not a formation. It's a whole philosophy. And I hope I've given you some feeling about that. So we made that. That book is, is uh, you can get that in your own bookstore, and you have to order it through the, uh, the publisher if they don't have it. We have a, a, a wing tee video that you can get by, by writing to the university and asking for wing tee video. It costs $51. There's an hour and a half in there. It has, I, I go through a little bit of introduction, then, then our line coach, that I, I think is the best line coach in the country, he goes over all these techniques step by step, bang, bang, bang. And then Kemsky is our, Kemsky is our offensive backfield coach and our offensive coordinator. Listen to this, could you believe this? I'm going to start my 29th year as a head coach at Delaware this fall. 29 years. Can you imagine how many people I have offended in 29 years? You'd figure that somebody would take a shot at me and get rid of me somehow. But our backfield coach has been with me 26 of those years. Can you believe that? A guy named Ted Kemsky, he's the one that helps. We wrote the book with. Actually, he wrote it and I signed my name to it. And, um, but, but anyway, so, so the he's in there for this for you're welcome to get that we have spring practice on april 4th we start april 4th we practice monday wednesday friday and saturday of every week We're, we do it in three weeks now and uh, we do that because of women's field hockey and they're the ones that are upset about us extra practice and all that sort of thing we spoke, you guys are dead i mean come on laugh a little bit here will you it's not time to go to sleep yet anyway um the, and you're welcome to that. The last, the last weekend on um, April 23rd and 24th, it's the third weekend, we have our own clinic. We have about 500 people there. If, and then we go out on the field and we really de uh, dedicate that or donate that, that time to you, to the people who are there. Uh, all of our coaches speak about their, what they're doing. And uh, once again, you're welcome to come to that. We've had everybody come there. We've had uh, um, a whole lot of coaches that you've heard of. And uh, we just, we have a pretty good time. You're, you're more than welcome to do that. Do you have any questions for me? Now I'd like to go to the bathroom. Thanks very much. <laughs>